Another day, another fuga. Hey guys, it's model making time, and in the words of Kate, I just, oh, Lizzie McGuire, you are an outfit repeater. But that is how today we are looking at the Fuga Magister as the melt of the Red Devils display team, or their native tongues, Diablos Rouge or the Rood Devils. And I've again probably butchered that just as I probably go to in every video, but I'm trying. <laughs> This is actually the fourth match that I built on this channel. I built two for the uh, Patrouille de France and one for the Silver Swallows display team. However, two of those, the Helicates, were in my old format of videos where I was sped up footage from live streams. So this is the first time I'm properly looking at the Helicate in my new format. Plus, looking back at my Patrouille de France ones now, um, they're looking kind of crusty. Should I redo it? Make a new Patrouille de France one to go next to my Red Devils? Well, that's up to you guys. You let me know in the comments down below. Oh, I'm still well, going down there. Make sure you hit subscribe, yeah? And as usual, we're going to be having a look at the history of the Red Devils display team with the Fuga Magister, the aircraft as it is in gaming, and we'll also have a look at the kit stray, which as I say is the first time we're doing this for the Hella Fuga Magister, even though I've built three of these, and this is the fourth one on this channel. But hey, they were way earlier into my YouTube life. <laughs> so let's have a look at the Fuga with the Red Devils then, shall we? We talked about the first mount of the uh, Red Devils, which was formed in 1957 in my previous video, which was with the Hawk Hunter. And today we're looking at the aircraft that they used from 1965 onwards, which was the Fuga Magister. The Red Devils and the Fuga Magister were a match made in heaven. The Magister's small size and agility allowed the Red Devils to perform complex and daring maneuvers. Unlike the Hawk Hunter as well, the Fuga Magister had a relatively low operating cost in comparison, which made it perfect for training and for a display team. This also mirrored their neighbouring display team, which is why I said in the last video there would be some other similarities, because the Pateau de France, the previous year, had gone from the Mystère 4 to the Fuga Magister, and other Red Devils were going from the Orga Hunter to the Fuga Magister. And uh, both of them also had national flags on the inside of their wings, so uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, shared ideas about how to present the Fuga Magister, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> the amazing thing is, though, this meant that two of the world's premier display teams were now equipped with the graceful whistling of the Fuga Magister. Now, this team continued to use the glorious red paint scheme that the Hawker Hunter had ended with in 1963, but this time they had smoke generators fitted um, to the aircraft, which could, you know, dissipate smoke in the Belgian national colours as well of black, yellow, and red. As has been mentioned with pretty much every aerobatic scene we looked at here, the oil crisis hit the team quite hard, and this reduced their numbers down to just two aircraft initially in 1972, and back up to three aircraft in 1973, and by 1974 they had recovered, no, not to four aircraft, but to six. <laughs> and it would be in this sort of ilk that they would survive for the remainder of their existence. The Red Devils became most famous with the Fugue Magister, and looking online today, you can see that back then there were lots of documentaries made about the Red Devils, both in the English, French, and in Dutch or Flemish, and uh, they are absolutely fascinating. Some are in colour, some are in black and white, but it just shows how famous this team was. And they performed all around the world in places like the Paris Air Show, Farnborough Air Show, and I've seen somewhere at the Moscow Air Show. Don't know if that's fully true, I couldn't find a proper source for it, but hey, it sounds incredible. And as I say, if they were that famous, maybe they did. Sadly, I can't see as much footage as I'd like to. You can see a lot of the uh, Petrou de France flying the Fugas, but unfortunately, relatively little of the Red Devils in comparison, which is kind of a crying shame. So if anyone out there has footage of them, please, please upload it onto YouTube. And if you don't want to, or you don't know how to edit it, then feel, feel free to send it to me and I'll happily like put it on my, my channel as an unlisted video for everyone to see. <laughs> now the Fuga Magister itself with Belgium would fully outlast the display team. The display team disbanded in 1977 due to sort of budgetary constraints, which we've had a million times. This disbandment would be many, many years before the Fuga Magister would actually cease operations with Belgium, who only retired the type in September of 2007. Literally 30 years after the display team got used them, which is actually incredible. Now they have kept at least one aircraft in an airworthy condition, but 
I've seen video footage of a duo a few years ago at this point, and I read some stuff suggesting there may still be a duo available, but there's at least one that's still around, and I, that's the one I saw flying with the uh, Red Devils current mount, the SF-260, at Flamant Air Show. Arguably, this is their most successful mount, and is the one that I would say they're most synonymous with. So, if you do want to see some of the documentaries I have referenced and you all seen behind me during the course of this conversation today, then please have a look at the references in the video description, because they're all there, and I've tried to make sure that you can see throughout this who those uh, uploaders are so that you can go over and watch them just as I say bear in mind some are in English some are in French some maybe in Dutch so you know <laughs> as for gaming this is the exact same story of the whole condo so I'm not going to go over it in too much detail but basically flight sim is your option and by that I mean Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 this is again another freeware model and uh, thanks to Flight Sim Historian for pointing this one out to me uh, because I had seen the uh, paid version of the food match there that had come out, but I didn't know there was a freeware version. And this has the options for the uh, Red Devils display team, which he actually flew on his channel. So that's what footage you're seeing today. <laughs> As you can see, this looks absolutely gorgeous, honey. And honestly, like these display team aircraft and flight simulator makes me want to fly flight sims so much more, and I want to stream it. I just wish I had a better graphics card because my. Uh, 5700 XT is screaming a little bit. I'm still here to play Sam, so maybe something in, I don't know, a decade when life becomes affordable again. <laughs> now, before we go too far into the kit story, it's probably not going to shock anyone here that this aircraft is one of Hella's mainstays. This aircraft became one of the standard jet trainers across the world, much like the BA Hawk, so it's no surprise that this became a staple of Hella's releases. So starting in 1980, this kit was originally released with Pateau de France markings and it looks absolutely beautiful. Not long after this though, it does appear that there was a Finnish release. Uh, I don't know if this was specific for the Finnish market, like one we'll look at later, but it does look like this was Finnish markings in the box at the very least. I've seen a couple of the black box ones that are Finnish markings specifically for the Finnish market, so it may have been I'm not sure. In 1986, we got the we got certainly a different box art. That's the uh, built one. I don't know why I just like this box art so much, but I've never liked this style. So we'll move on from that, and uh, we have a look at a couple of amazing releases. Well, it's three releases, but it's two unique ones, and then another Paclou de France one. So. The first of the unique ones was a Luftwaffe release, and this looks like it was for the German market specifically. Uh, as I said, after that um, release, uh, which was in 1987, we did have a Patu de France release, that was in 1996. Again, nice box art, absolutely fine. Nothing offensive about it, it's just what we would expect from Hella and the uh, Food Magister. But then after that, in 1998, we had a Finnish boxing, which I've actually kept the box for, it's on my wall, <laughs> which was for the Finnish Air Force specifically, and it's a Finnish release specifically as well, because it's the box is all in Finnish as well, and it was part of a series that Hella did for the Finnish market. Really unique, wish we had more of those sorts of things, and uh, as mentioned in my Rare Model Kits video, it seems to be quite rare because no one had put this on Scalemates and I had to add it myself, which I had to learn how to do because I never had to do that before in Scalemates because it's a really inclusive and amazing database. In 2005, the Fugel Magister was included in an Austrian Air Force anniversary set. Around the same time, there was a reboxing of the 1996 release of the Patrouille de France boxing and the artwork remained the same and standard until 2017. In 2018, we got the new box art, which is the newest release of the kit, with, I think, the best artwork, because it has sort of the smoke behind it, they've just done a loop, it's really gorgeous artwork, I really like it. Now, what looks to be at the same time of this new Hala release in 2018, there was a Mr. Craft release, and I'm pretty sure I have this one in my stash somewhere, not entirely sure, but... Yeah, it's uh, for the sort of the end of the Belgian um, usage of the type. It uh, has the special set, which is the last of the many. Um, really, really cool set, actually. Finally, in 2020, we did get a starter set version of the Hella release, which includes Hella paints, which are kind of bad, and then the Hella brushes, which are fine. They're pretty good, actually. <sighs> 
we are halfway through this. Guys, you're amazing. Thank you for joining me so far. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel to see the next video that comes out, at, well, a week today. And like this video as well. And leave me a comment below. Do you think that this display team needs more recognition? Because I feel like they should be more famous than they are, no? With that though, we're going to head over to the unboxing. So looking in this boxing of the Fuga CM117 Magister, we've obviously got a lot of finished parts that we will be ignoring for the most part. The instructions are relatively well laid out. They are quite old instructions. You can see the color schemes here, but the parts are actually pretty good. Very nice detail considering the age of this tool back from the 1980s. Everything looks quite nice. The panel lines aren't too deep. There's not really many raised details, but the ones that are there are kind of okay. And the cockpit is basic but not too bad considering again it's age those parts at the very bottom of the sprue though next to number four are lost unfortunately so this should build a really nice kit we've got these decals from Harhunt here love this color layout everything is spot on with these decals they should make an absolutely beautiful kit you do have enough to do um, the kit with the full markings on and then I think you have some left over so if you wanted to try and make some yourself with uh, painting a lot of it you could do so. Well this unboxing is going to be a surprise to absolutely no one because it's a very standard hell of a fad. I mean what did you guys expect? But I really like this kit and it's nice to use one that's you know a rare kit even though it's a not rare model. And this is just a rare box thing, so it's nice that I've got the box now secured on my wall with my other boxes and box art, but I can uh, use the actual kit itself because it probably otherwise would have never been made because making a finished version is really far down the list of priorities right now. <laughs> as you've seen as well, the decals I'm using are from Harhen. This is, uh, from what I can see, is a one-man operation and they make an incredible variety of decals. I have had these decals before, but an earlier version of this that I was making had decals from someone called Tomcat Decals who I don't think actually exists as a business anymore because I used to have lots of display teams from them. They made a lot of them themselves and they don't seem to make any anymore, which is a shame. But Harhen has these and they are absolutely amazing, as you'll see when we actually put the models together. So let's just get into it. Now, people who know me and know this channel know that I've built many of these already. As we said earlier in the video, this is the fourth Magister I'm doing, and it's not even the last one this year I'm doing. So <laughs> we've definitely got more of these to go. I am very much used to making these, um, so I don't really expect many issues other than me accidentally throwing away uh, one of the sprues before I'd finished with it. But, you know, that is what it is at this point. Now, as for the construction, I've gone for just gluing the wings together first. I do that on most kits, to be honest, because then at least they're all done before you actually glue them to the fuselage. And I'm dry fitting them as well to make sure that they fit onto the kit really nicely, which, I mean, of course they do. This kit is one of the very few where you're not going to need to do too much in the way of filler. You will need to get rid of some seam lines, but the filling is nowhere near as bad as it is on a lot of kits that come from this era. Now, you'll notice that I've tried to zoom in to help you see me making the cockpit but unfortunately I'm also managing to pull it out of focus quite a lot but I'm just putting a load of glue in so I can put the seats into their little tub that they come in and then we'll put the um, the instrument panel in the front of that and then there is a little um, I was gonna say joystick control column that's a <laughs> correct wording for it that goes at the front as well see this isn't too hard to do I'm just popping it on there I think I did uh, make it fall out a couple of times, so I just had to glue it a couple of times, but it's, it's fine. Once it's all in, it looks quite nice. It's just a standard bathtub, but with quite a lot of detail, to be honest. And you can see the two control columns there that I'm going to glue in. And once that's done, I go on to the fuselage halves. It's the air intakes that we need to do first, and unfortunately this is slightly out of focus, so I do apologise for that. But once we pop the first section on, you then put sort of, I guess, the cover on it, the bit that, like makes it all blend into the fuselage and that gives you a really beautiful looking air intake. Now whilst all of that is drying, I've obviously done that on both halves of the fuselage, I'm going in and just painting the canopy. The canopy? The <laughs> cockpit, sorry. The cockpit is going to be done in all black and then I'll go through and highlight some of the details later on. The seats are going to have a slightly different colour and the inside of the actual plane itself is also going to be in black. There is a part of this which I think I should have done in white and I haven't actually painted it on yet so we'll see whether or not I decide to do that in the end. 
the cockpit detail is not super so i did go through and try and just paint some white dots on some of the instrument panel just to try and make it look like it's got a bit more life to it and you can see that i've gone over and just dry brushed a load of uh, sort of light gray on there just to try and make it look a bit more varied so it's not just the flat black i don't think you're going to notice it significantly but the fuga does have a massive amount of glass on it relative to the size of the aircraft so it is quite noticeable so i did think this was i guess worth doing to be perfectly honest whereas normally I probably would have left it. Once all of that was ready then, we just had to glue the undercarriage leg in the front that you can see is just popped in there. And then I'm putting the cockpit inside and just making sure it all fits and then gluing it together. You can see it's a little bit fiddly. It's not too hard though. I've definitely made uh, aircraft that have worse uh, cockpit assemblies than this, to be honest. And it probably helps that I built many of these already. This really helps the aircraft take shape and it's, I mean, this is most of the part count already done. At this point, you've pretty much just got the tail and undercarriage to go and then a few transparencies, which, well, there may or may not have been one missing from my set, but we'll go into that when we get to it. Just squashing it all together now, making sure that it all goes in really nicely. I did find that I had to take this together quite severely because it didn't seem to want to hold fully which probably means I've got something slightly out of alignment you can see I'm using the Tamiya tape at the front there this is actually the Tamiya bending tape um I actually find it much better so I've just held it all together and then I'm putting the tail sections into that beautiful v-shaped tail that the Fuga Magister is absolutely famous for there were some small parts that had to go onto the back of the aircraft I did lose one of these as well, again, just because they're really small. Even when I'm using my tweezers, I managed to lose it and apparently not get the uh, aircraft in focus the whole time. So I do apologize that it looks like you can see the mat really clearly, but not the aircraft. <laughs> um, again, guys, I'm still, I'm still doing my best, <laughs> but sometimes I just do stuff wrong. You can see though that I'm gluing parts on. It's just really out of focus. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Once that was all done, I undercoated the whole thing in, um, I think, white. It was uh, Warhammer's, or oh, Citadel Paints, white undercoat. I, I think it's Corax white, is it? And then I went in and painted with a yellow. Now, this is the same yellow that I use in my Hawker Hunter. So this is a mix of life colours, space yellow, and a tiny bit of that orange, just to give it a bit more warmth, a bit more depth than just a standard yellow. Now, this proved to actually be massively unnecessary, and if anything, was actually a hindrance to decals, but we'll look at that a bit later. Now, I have covered the canopy, which I've glued on with just some uh, clear fix and um or glue and glaze should i say that's actually what i've used glue and glaze and i've covered it with vallejo's masking putty which i've never used before this is my first project but oh my god the results are amazing now the red i'm using is just uh life color standard red and i decided i was going to go on and paint the red myself i knew this didn't have to be 100 percent accurate but i thought it would at least give you know a a bit more definition and save me having to paint it on after the decals again this ended up being probably the worst way to do this and i should have put the decals on first because where the red goes into the where the yellow is for the decals it does show through slightly because these decals are not the thickest i guess in the world not the most pigmented so it does show through but that isn't to insult harhan's decals at all because this is my error I should have put the decals on, let them dry, probably glaze them over, and then I should have gone in for some masking tape and put the red on, or I should have just painted the whole ring red, which probably would have been the right approach. But it is what it is. I did it the way I did it. Now it's also worth noting, I think on their website, this is for the, um, I wanna say the special hobby Fuga Magister. I'm obviously using the Hello one, so this may not fit 100%, and that is just the way it is. I still ended up getting a really nice result and I still absolutely adore the aircraft that I have. Something right in front of me right now. I think it looks gorgeous. Now the paint was slightly still wet so I did get some of the red onto the yellow and I just washed that off with a little bit of water onto my paintbrush and I just brush it away. This ends up being absolutely fine, no issue whatsoever. Now do I think these decals are absolutely necessary? No, probably not. Not for the underside of the wings. I probably could have just masked this myself. But did it save me a lot of time and faff? Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, as someone who can be very lazy with model making, I think it's always really nice when you do get that. So again, Harhans, I love you. You do great work. 
thank you. <laughs> I've already got a couple of other things on your website that I'm eyeing up to do. So uh, yeah, really, really glad that you had these available. Now, once I've done both sides of the wings, you can see all the tail. I've also done the same where I painted the red on. It shows even worse on the tail. Again, that's my fault. So don't judge Harhan's decals through my error. These again do not fit 100%. I'm assuming that's just through the differences in the model that they chose to use compared to what I've used. That's fine. All I did was I let it all dry and then I just cut off any excess with my scissors and wham, that was it. It was really, really easy. No worry whatsoever. Now these randles on the top uh, went on really nicely. Uh, I don't know if I got the position exactly right. I tried my best to get the position right, but you know, sometimes you get it slightly off. And I mean, looking at my finished one, I'm not sure <laughs> still, uh, but it looks okay. And they, they, the important thing is they went on well. And unlike on my Hawker Hunter, they didn't just disintegrate, which, you know, that's the important thing really. <laughs> These long strips, um, I found these were way too long and I don't know if I did these right and I'm pretty sure the very end one I did wrong um, Which is unfortunate looking at my finished model. I'm not too sure But that is what it is again I'm gonna say that many times at this point because you've just got to learn to accept your errors at some point Because I don't want to just re be remaking the same model 500 times to see if I do it better the next time Sometimes you just got to accept the faults that you've made Unfortunately, again, I managed to get this off camera a fair bit and out of focus, but you can see me putting the white line onto the red model. I think, I don't know why it was just so out of focus. My camera is normally pretty good, uh, but for some reason it just kept falling slightly out of focus. I used my fingers and the brush quite a lot here just to try and make sure it was really flush. I did find the ends didn't go down initially too well, but eventually they did just sort of sink into the right area. And I did find that I had to push it inside the air intakes just to get rid of some of the excess, but that's fine. I'd rather have too much than not enough of the decal because, wow, I mean, if you don't, if you don't have enough, that's, you have to paint it. And that just makes a really clear line as we found on the Hawker Hunter when they slightly disintegrated. I've done that on both sides, of course. I'm only showing you one half just to make it a lot easier. And once that was on, I did then put the air intake sides on again i found these too long i don't know if i was doing something wrong or if i misread which part goes where but and it was it was fine it all went on really nicely to be perfectly honest with you again i did that on both sides and then i'd move on to the rear section where again the white line continues all the way right to the end of the fuselage i absolutely adore this paint scheme i think diablo rouge and the uh, fuga magister is honestly one of my top five display scheme aircraft of all time i think it's stunning um it, it's really hard to stop it I, and i i never even saw them fly with a few commands there obviously i've seen one of them fly in uh, florenz with the um, current display team but yeah I, I really wish i could have seen a, like five of these together because it would have been glorious you can see that the decals are not quite adhering on the front of the nose, but it's okay, we'll, we'll get that all flattened down in the end. These decals do flatten down really nicely with some decal fix I found, unlike with, again, the decals we had on the Hawk Gunter, which just split and separate and shattered and were all very crunchy. You can see the white line there is all the way onto the back of the engine exhaust there, which is really, really nice. We then do the rear bit. Now, the rear bit I put on is a slight angle. I think I did it wrong and I think I mixed up the parts, which again is absolutely my error. It, it's just, I've just accepted that it was a fault that I did created. It's just the way it is and that's absolutely fine. You know, can't get everything right every time as much as we would like to. You can really see how beautiful the underside of the wings are. I don't know what it is about the Belgian flag. Um, I've always thought it was really, really striking. Um, I mean, I know it's kind of this, same colours as the German flag so I guess the German colours match here as well but it's just this paint scheme is gorgeous <laughs> I've always loved it it's always just captured the imagination I think I saw one of the uh, Fuga Magisters flying in the red at Fairford back in the day and I've seen obviously their red alpha jet once upon a time so it's really cool to get to make this model I, I just love it so much and it looks so smart I did unfortunately get some of my hand marks on some of the decals so they're not as crisp as they should be on the actual finished result. Probably should have worn gloves from this point onwards. That's again my fault, not, not the fault of the decals. Um, I did also have some issues when glossing it. 
with my um, my my own gloss. Now here is the most satisfying part: is pulling off this Vallejo um, masking putty. And I literally only bought Vallejo because it was the cheapest one. And I apologise again; it's out of focus. But I bought this masking putty because it was the cheapest one, and I'd used mask gold a few times, and I hadn't been super satisfied with the results. And my God, honeys, this. Oh, it's absolutely stunning. I had no issues with it sort of tearing or creating a really uneven finish. It fit into exactly where I needed it to. I probably put about three or four layers on this because it dries almost transparent, um, even though it's like a blue liquid. And I was really not confident, so I just kept layering it up. And I feel like that was a good choice because in the end, I got these really crisp, beautiful lines. I was a bit right at the back what I'm pulling off now. I think I should actually be painting white. Um, I've not done that yet on my actual model. It's uh, right in front of me now and it's still clear. I, I'm too scared to do it. I may end up just leaving it clear, uh, even though on the actual model it's meant to be white. So that is just going to be an inaccuracy on my kit, I think. I don't know. I'll decide later on. I might even redo this figure at some point because oh, I love it so much. It's just so cool. Now, we finally got a bit of focus, you can just see how clean that pulls off. A little bit of splittage at the side, but nothing to worry about. It's just, I, I honestly can't get over how good this putty is, guys. It's, it's incredible how amazing it works. I've, I've used Masco many times and never had the results that I've had with this. Vallejo, I don't love your paints, but my god, I started using your varnish the other day, the satin varnish on my Lancaster. And that's amazing. And now I'm using a masking putty. Everything except your paints, I seem to absolutely love and get on with. So uh, yeah, really, really good modeling supplies there. You can see the tail as well. Still has some decal hanging over the side. That's something we'll sort out later on. But yeah, we're pretty much reaching the end of where we need to be here. It's uh, all looking really good now. You can see the undercarriage is all on as well. In the garage comes in three parts. Well, four parts, the wheel, the undercarriage strut and then the two parts uh, that stuck on the outside that you can see and then there's a separate part that goes on the inside for covering the landing gear as well but yeah this I just can't go over it now this is the clear part that I lost so I'm literally just putting some glue and glaze on the front which is what I used to sit the canopy on in the first place really really good stuff love this thank you again um, to Jackson for sending me even more of this because I use it on every project but it's it's resulted in like this sort of semi-transparency and I love it. It's really clear that I've made one of these before, right? Because <laughs> this was not a struggle whatsoever. I really enjoyed putting this together at the Fugue Lunch there. It's one of my all time favorite aircraft, but it's just so gorgeous to look at. So really happy, really easy to put together. I did paint this at the same time as the Hawker Hunter that we saw in the previous video, just because I had them both at the same time and thought, well, they're both going to be using pretty much the same colors. The only difference in this case is I did not need to paint the black on the wings underneath. I didn't actually need to paint the yellow either, so that was kind of a waste. But, you know, I, I, I just thought I'd try and give it the best chance it could. What's actually ended up happening is that there is a different sort of colour halfway through in the yellow, but I'm not going to risk it and go back over and paint it. I don't see the point. I think it looks fine. If I really wanted to fix it, I can, but that is my error and that's something for you guys to be aware of when you see the final result that's not the fault of the decals whatsoever that is entirely on me guys but can i just say these decals were so easy to use like really enjoyed them really good quality and the layout on the sheets as well there's enough space for you to cut everything out without having to worry about destroying another decal unlike the mr craft one we had last week note that i'm still raging about that so without further ado, let's go and have a look at the Spoon Magister and the Red Devil Scheme. Popping off.
Okay, so we need to talk about whether you should bite or fly, but I'm gonna say I will do this in two sections. So we'll talk about the model kit itself and we'll talk about the decals. The model kit itself, this is a standard Fugger Magister. Now, the Magister from FX and Humbrol, or what, what, what was Humbrol, now FX, they are slightly different. They both have inaccuracies. The canopies are not right on either, if I remember correctly. I, it's a toss up as to which one is better. From some of the sources I've read online, overall, the Hella version is viewed as more accurate. As someone who, again, is not particularly great at knowing what is the most accurate or not, it's just not something I have an eye for. Um, I, I have to trust other people that the Hella one is more accurate as a kit. But to be far perfectly honest, from what I understand, they're both a bit wrong, but mostly right. And you can definitely tell they're both food magisters. I'm going to use the Helicate purely because that's what I had and I didn't want to spend unnecessary money basically. This was something I wanted to make because I had it in my stash already. Same for pretty much all of these. So when it comes to the Helicate, buy it. The actual new Platinum Defiance one, really really cheap. Decals are a bit hit and miss, maybe I do need to do another video on it at some point, but overall really cheap kit, really accessible. I think I've seen it sort of some places between sort of seven to ten pounds so really really accessible and again really easy kit to put together as for the decals this isn't even a question buy i would buy anything from han han again there are a lot of decals on the website that i'm really really looking forward to maybe one day buying right now cost is something i have to consider so it's not immediately on the list but there are a couple of things on there where i'm thinking Hands, I'm gonna be ordering from you again. I just know I am. <laughs> so yeah, if you really want to make this Red Doubles dis um, display aircraft, then go to Harhands. The only thing I will say is, and I have no idea if Harhands will ever see this, is if you can add some of the anniversary options to the Red Doubles display team pack, which I don't think you need to add locks. Of, uh, it's mainly badges on the um, on the side of the aircraft. That would really up this because that's what Tomcat did before, and I think that would up this kit to another level. I think there was some options on the sort of the pause and the end of the wings, if I remember correctly. But that's the only thing I think you could add. But I mean, quite frankly, honey, this is an amazing set of decals, and I'm really thrilled with them. So this is a much more positive outcome than the previous video, I guess. Guys, I think that's everything from me. If you do want to support the channel, you can become a channel member. If you are the higher tier, then I will shout the name out at the end of each video. If it is you feel like you want to support me outside of that, then feel free to go over to Kofi and drop me either a one-off donation or a monthly donation through that. If you would like to support me in other ways, you can just like this video and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate absolutely all of you and thank you so much for being here. It means the absolute world to me. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much to all of my channel members. Advanced kits get their names shouted out at the end of each video. For that, we've got Taggers365, Charles Parker and Jeff Styrama. We've got the three channel members who've been there for a few months now in Iron Duke, Crazy Locher and Explosive Water, who is approaching nearly six months. Thank you so much for your continued support. The channel goes a lot smoother with you guys helping out, so I really appreciate it. And hey, do you want to watch another one of my videos? Well, YouTube took this one right out for you. You get the video going and I'll make sure to bring the snacks and we can chill and watch this video. Right, let's get into it. See you in the video. Bye.